If you were lucky enough to watch MSNBC last Sunday around 6 p.m. Pacific time, you might have seen a deep dive in healthcare in America that certainly stood out from the normal way the mainstream media talks about it. And that special, Red, White, and Who, was brought to you by Francesca Fiorentini, who joins us now in studio. Hey, hey welcome back to the studio. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And a new war. Oh, it's so exciting. Um, um, yes, if you were here. happened to be on watching MSNBC uh, or visiting your parents who have MSNBC mm -hmm. on December 29th, you caught Red, White, and Who? Well, look, I watched it with Arlene, my wife, and uh, we had a great time because, like, so, I mean, you're gonna talk about the special. I will just say my sort of spoiler for it is um, I was surprised that they ran it with the way you talked about Medicare for All and the, like, it, you don't often hear it on CNN and MSNBC. Right. Like, and it was great that because of you, many people who don't get exposed to this particular view on healthcare and what needs to happen, like they saw it. I think the main thing that well, that we don't see on mainstream media or or a lot of media generally is actually an explanation of our current system, mm -hmm. an explanation of Medicaid, Medicare, what are they for, who are they for? Um, the ACA, like has the ACA been fully implemented? Actually in 14 states where under the ACA, the Medicaid was supposed to be expanded, 14 states have not done that. So millions of people who should be getting accessible and free or almost free, very affordable healthcare under Medicaid, are not right now. Mm -hmm. So like there's all this misinformation and it is a dry topic. It is bureaucratic. I think it's you confusing. made it fun though. Thank you. And I think but that's the reason why I think a lot of folks are turning to Medicare for all is because it's like actually this simplifies things. Mm -hmm. Um and after understanding and seeing how folks that that I spoke to in three different states all in different um sort of uh, all in different states, if you will, of healthcare, meaning national policies are playing out differently in their, in their, you know, where they're located. Um, you realize that we're all operating in the dark under different plans with, you know, um, with no way of, of really navigating it, actually. Yeah. It's confusing for people. Not only is it confusing, it's expensive mm -hmm. um, and it's dysfunctional, right? Yeah, Folks? you have people who are like camped out, like semi permanently outside of hospitals uh, right. in Houston, I believe it was. Yes. Um, because it's just so expensive. So people have sold their homes, they're living in like campers basically. Right. And, um, and by the way, you didn't just go around talking to big lib activists and everything, like you were talking to cowboys and people in Texas and stuff like that. Yes, that's the first. That's the first stop was Texas, and I made sure uh, I was like, "Who's got the most dangerous job?" And yet, mm -hmm. kind of the most American job, uh, mm -hmm. and that is a cowboy who doesn't have health insurance. And I was like, uh, "Not insuring a cowboy, wouldn't you consider that a little un-American?" And he mm -hmm. was like, I, "I don't know how to answer that." But so, so that's what I want to touch <laughs> on next. So, um, not all of them necessarily, you know, are like. Like super progressive, like on healthcare. But these people, like you're talking, they're in the middle of health crises of their own. Um, were there any sort of common elements to what they were looking for in the future, what they wanted to see proposed? What? Yeah. So that's sort of what I was saying is that even though it's it's not spelled out as Medicare for all, I think folks want simplification, mm -hmm. and they know that they're being gouged either way. So a lot of the people that I spoke to, um, they're like, well, I don't think it should be free, you know, but. Literally, these are my life savings. Mm -hmm. This is my entire retirement, and we are the lucky ones in this RV park because we have friends who weren't able to up and move to a different state to get the best care for cancer, and those people are dead. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, it, it's terrifying and terrible. And you know, even in places like New York, um, where we ended up, which has like five percent uninsured, you know, folks. So it's mm -hmm. it's you know, people have health care. I talked to a mom who her son got sick and basically she's now in favor of Medicare for all because between the hospitals and the doctors and the specialists, all who are on different forms and take different forms of insurance, like you're in network, you're out of network. Yeah. Um, she doesn't care who's in or who's out of her network, she's trying to keep her son alive. Yeah. Meanwhile, her husband is afraid to lose his job because if he loses his job, they lose their specific health insurance. So she's like, this is 
way more complicated than it needs to be. It's a cruel system. Yeah. And so she's like, let's stra let's stra uh, scrap it, strap and scrap, uh, and, <laughs> and have something simpler. Mm. So that was the commonality, even if a lot of the folks I talked to weren't ready to say Medicare for all, they know that what's happening right now uh, is completely dysfunctional. Yeah. So um, the special aired, yes. as of right now, it's a one of, but it's not difficult to imagine how that could be a series. And so if people are interested in seeing more progressive program on MSNBC, what can they do to make that happen? I think you should at MSNBC. So Tweet them? Tweet MSNBC, uh, write them on Facebook, say you want Red, White and Who re-aired, you want more Tag episodes. Tag Francesca. Tag me, Franny, Fio. Also, um, uh, my full interview with Bernie Sanders, because we did end the entire special with a sit down over bagels with you know, the big man. Um, it, the Which full is awesome. interview. I'm super jealous. It was, by the it was way. fun, it was fun. I bet. Uh, made him laugh twice, it was great. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but watch the full interview, it's 11 minutes long. He goes in depth into Medicare for All in ways that I don't think we've seen him go in depth before. Um, talking about how it's going to be implemented, how initially in the first year, it would go down to 55 rather than 65 for mm -hmm. Medicare, then 45. So there is actually a plan of implementation. He has thought this through yeah. um, and that doesn't always get out because well, there, there really is a media blackout and I think we're starting to break yeah. that. And um, you can perhaps be part of that, get that 11 minute interview, tweet that out at her, at MSNBC and show them that there is a demand and appetite for this sort of content. Uh, Francesca, it was awesome, I really enjoyed it and thank, thank you, you for joining us today. Thanks Great so to have much, you here. John. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.